Hey guys, Josh here with the Weekend Angler back with another Short Tip Saturday video. And today's DIY project, we're going to be building us a portable trailer like tester. So stick around. Alright, guys, no matter how you cut it, wiring a trailer and trying to get all those lights working usually isn't any fun. And uh, one of the worst things is you get it done and you have to find somebody to sit in the vehicle and test all the functions. That way you can walk around the trailer and make sure that your lights work. But today's project, we're going to be taking this ammo can and we're going to be turning it into a portable, self-powered trailer light tester. And it's going to have flashing outputs for the turn signals. It's going to have solid outputs for things like the brake lights, the tail lights the electric brakes, all of the functions of a seven-way standard trailer connector. We're going to be able to take it out of this box. So let me show you what we're working with today, what we're going to need for the project, and then we're going to get started putting this thing together. I can't wait to try it out. For this project, you will need a 50 caliber plastic ammo can, a 12-volt, 7-amp-hour lithium or sealed lead-acid battery, a seven-way blade-style trailer wiring connector, a 12 volt flasher module, a 10 amp auto reset thermal circuit breaker, and a four pole eight throw rotary switch. You will also need four rectifier diodes, some stranded hookup wire, some quarter inch female crimp disconnects, butt splice connectors, and some number eight ring terminals. All right, the first step of our project is going to be getting this switch wired. It's going to be the most important part of our project because this is going to control the outputs of voltage to the pins that we need. Now, I've gone ahead and made a road map for this switch. It shows all the connections you're going to have to make. And if you look down in the description of the video, I've got a link to that document. That way you can download that. And you'll be able to build your tester exactly the same way that I'm building mine. So for this part, we're going to need some scrap wire. We're going to need our switch. We're going to need our solder and iron and some solder. So let's go ahead and get the switch set up. I'll get that zoomed in on the workbench and show you guys how we're going to wire this up. Begin by locating the common pins of the switch. These pins maintain constant connection to the round disc at the switch's center. Each individual deck of the switch will have its own common terminal. Mark the location of the common pins for easier identification later. Label the switch decks with the numbers 1 through 4, as shown. Solder a section of hookup wire to the common pin on the first deck of your switch. Trim any excess wire. Cut two sections of hookup wire to around 6 inches in length. Crimp a quarter inch female disconnect to one end of each wire. Using the wires from the previous step, solder one wire to the common terminal of deck two. Solder the remaining wire to the common terminal of deck three. The wire attached to deck two's common pin connects to the X terminal of your flasher. The wire attached to deck three's common pin connects to the L terminal. Before you begin wiring the switch's function pins, it is a good idea to label each pin for clarity. Wire the switch exactly as shown in the wiring diagram document. Remember, diodes are polarized and must be installed correctly. This is the most important step, so take your time and be precise. Choose a mounting location for your switch. It may be necessary to remove material to accommodate your switch. On the hinge side of your ammo can, drill a 2 inch hole approximately 3 inches up from the can's bottom. Test fit the trailer connector into the hole you just drilled. Mark the top left and bottom right mounting hole locations and then remove the trailer connector from the ammo can.
Drill a 3 16th inch hole at both marked locations. Reinstall the trailer connector and install fasteners into both mounting holes. Use a number eight machine screw, flat washer, and nylon lock nut. Drill three 16th inch holes at the remaining two mounting locations. Install and tighten fasteners at the remaining two mounting holes. Drill a mounting hole for the switch using a 25 64 inch bit. Install the switch and lightly tighten the mounting nut. Install the knob onto the switch's shaft and rotate the switch through all eight positions. When installing the circuit breaker, the copper terminal connects to the battery's positive terminal. The silver colored terminal connects to the switch. Crimp a number eight ring terminal to the wire leading to the common pin of deck one. Attach this ring terminal to the circuit breaker's silver colored stud. Crimp a number eight ring terminal to a 12 inch section of hookup wire. Attach this terminal to the circuit breaker's copper stud. Securely tighten the circuit breaker connections. Use hot glue to attach the circuit breaker to the inside of the ammo can's lid near the hinge. Now use hot glue to attach the flasher module to the inside of the lid near the hinge. Replace the ring terminal on the trailer connector's white wire with a butt splice, then attach a 12 inch section of black wire to the other side of the splice connector. Using butt splice connectors, connect the switch's output wires to their corresponding wires on the trailer harness. Once again, all of these connections are clearly outlined in the wiring document. If you remove the ammo can's lid during installation, reattach it at this time. Crimp a quarter inch female disconnect terminal to the wire coming from the copper terminal on the circuit breaker. This will be our positive battery cable. Crimp a quarter inch female disconnect terminal to the wire coming from the white wire of the trailer connector. This will be our negative battery cable. Apply hot glue to the battery's bottom and quickly place it into the ammo can at the side opposite the trailer connector. Attach the positive and negative battery cables to the battery's terminals. Rotate the switch through all functions, verifying proper voltage output using a voltmeter. Close and latch the lid, taking care not to pinch or cut any wires. Label each switch position and its function using your preferred method. I chose a sheet of cardstock overlaid with clear shipping tape. All right, guys, with our box done, we're ready to go out and hook it up to the trailer. See if it works. See if it lights our trailer up. We're going to have to use my utility trailer. It's the only thing I have with a seven pin connector. But what's good is it's going to give us pretty much all those functions. We'll let us test them out. Let's go. Connect your trailer harness to the seven way socket on your test box. One function at a time, verify proper trailer operation. Tail lights, rear marker, and side marker lights. Left turn signals. Brake lights. Right turn signals.
check electric brakes by listening for the high-pitched hum when active. My trailer does not currently utilize the 12 volt auxiliary or reverse lights, but voltage for these functions was checked on the junction box for the trailer wiring harness. All right guys, you might be sitting there wondering why I didn't add say a four pin flat or a five pin flat or six pin round connector to this. Well, the answer to that is simple. They make adapters for all of those that connect to this seven way blade. So we wired up a seven way blade Use your adapter, whatever you need for your trailer. If it uses a four pin flat, get a seven way to four pin flat adapter. Same thing with a five pin flat or a six pin round. Whatever you've got on your trailer, they make an adapter to go from this seven way connector. Just make it real easy. Now guys, that's gonna bring us just about to the end of this video. As you saw, all of our functions on the trailer are working. They're all being powered by our little portable box here. It doesn't weigh nothing. A couple pounds. That's about all it is. Makes it super simple whenever you're wiring a trailer to make sure that you've got your wiring correct because you don't have to have a tow vehicle backed up here, hooked up, and you certainly don't have to go get your children to put it in left turn or right turn or hit the brakes or all that because that just saves you an argument. Let's be realistic here. They're not interested in whether the trailer lights work like you are. So, guys, that's all I've got for this video. I hope this one has helped you out. I hope you enjoy it. If you build this project, if you have any questions, put them down there in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, once again, the wiring diagram for the switch is in the description of this video. You can go there, download you a PDF of that. It's going to show you all the wiring connections on that switch that you need to make. And that'll help you out when it comes time to build your own portable trailer light tester. Guys, if this video has helped you out, please take a moment, give it that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, checking me out for the very first time, guys, hit the subscribe and that little bell that's right next to it. That way you don't miss any videos. That's all I got for this one, guys. Appreciate you watching. And until next time, we'll catch you out on the water.